We're going. Okay, we're all set to start whenever you are, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'd like to call a meeting to order. Um, are there any public comments tonight? Uh, yes. Um, just, uh, I don't know if you got my email. I probably should have asked you. So I just want to say this is the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee uh, public meeting on Wednesday, January 26th, 2022, uh, five o'clock being held via Zoom. Um, so with regard to uh, public comments, I did just earlier, uh, maybe a half hour ago, receive a, uh, an email, which I forwarded to everyone. Um, I, I'll just read it into the record. It's short. It came from David Brogan at 72 Gooseberry Hill. Um, he said, I am ready to support park and rec budget for the softball field at Catone Field. The girls' high school team has a subpar playing environment compared to other towns in the area. There's a large group of parents with children in it and out in and out of the softball program that recognizes the lack of competitive equality that the softball team has compared to other teams. We would ask the park and rec budget money towards potential plans that have been discussed to create a scoreboard, dugouts for player safety, and electric to allow for future growth. Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? Okay. No, that was it. All right, I guess we'll move on to item B. Um, approval of the minutes from the last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Okay. I have a second. Second. Okay. Uh, Minutes are approved. Uh, fire department asked for a uh, continuance, so we won't be hearing from them tonight. So we're going to move on to Parks and Rec. Uh, Kathy, you know, you ready? Sure. <clears throat> Good Kathy, evening, everyone. Kathy, it's before you start, check. I'm sorry, can I just interrupt you for a second? I'm just wondering, uh, the 203-996 number, 1393, who's that? Hi, I'm just listening in. Okay. Thanks. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Kathy. Oh, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm here tonight to present the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board's <clears throat> capital improvement request for this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to um, go off of Derek's. Um, I believe he refers to it as budget workshop, worksheet number three, and just kind of go to the park and rec programs that are listed there. <clears throat> and for the park and rec advisory board, their number one priority was the community center, the HVAC system. And I know you may have talked about this in an earlier meeting, and it's also listed under the town's uh, buildings. Um, and all I can say is that we've been, this unit is 24 years old now, and we've been told by the company that repairs it that it, the life expectancy is 15 to 20. So we're, we're, um, we're doing well keeping it going, but we're really concerned that it takes a lot of maintenance effort every year, and um, it's on its last leg. So this is something we really need to look at replacing. And we've already had an engineer do a um, study and complete design plans for this unit just to be ready should we get funding available to go. I don't know if there are any questions about the community center unit. Okay, then I'll, I'll move on to the park board. Their item number two priority is the Millwoods Park, we have our swimming pool there and the pool chlorine tanks that um, keep the water chlorinated so that we can swim in it. The uh, staff have noticed some deterioration in them at the end of the summer swimming season this past, um, past season. And um, so we wanted to identify them and talk about them because you don't know at what time they may deteriorate to a point where you can't use them anymore. And as many of you may be aware, that pool has been extensively used by our community for many years, and especially during COVID because of its, its size and the ability to spread out. So the, um, the chlorine tanks and 
The interesting thing with the chlorine tanks with the, um, when physical services got a quote, the quote was only good for the tanks for seven days. So that's why you see we've estimated our, our number for that a little higher, only because we're not sure when we're ready to order them what that cost will be. And that's uh, the tank cost. And then there's spray and other costs associated with the installation. So um, that's the, these, the community center air conditioning unit and the pool chlorine tanks are really key priorities for us to be able to serve the community. And that's why the park board has made them their number one and two priorities. And I'll just, after each project, I'll just stop for a moment in case you do have questions. Just uh, two quick questions, Kathy. Uh, do we know how old those tanks are? And is this something that our staff is gonna install or we have to hire somebody to do the replacement? I'm, I'm not sure of the actual, um, I know one tank is, is, oh gosh, probably one tank goes back to probably about eh, eight or 10 years. Sally, and if you want to help me out on this, I know the other one is a little newer, but, um, but yeah, they're, they're, it's just, that's about what I think they are. And I could certainly yeah. get that info for you. And, and it's something that we would install ourselves or we have to have a company come in and do the whole job. I think that's, we've installed one of those in the past ourselves. So I would think that might be something that could be done in house, but I think it, you also have to check to make sure everything obviously with the chlorine is all done appropriately. I, I believe the last time physical services staff worked with the manufacturing company on the installation, just to make sure that everything is signed off properly and that it's inspected properly because of the fact that it's holding chlorine. Okay, then I'll move on to our number three priority, which has been um, on our list for a while. Over at the Nature Center, we have our main entrance where there's a concrete sidewalk and an ADA ramp. <clears throat> and that <clears throat> has just been deteriorating and maintenance is great and they come in and fix it, but we're looking to have a company come in and literally rip it out and put it all in as new just because it's a constant repair. So that's been on the list for a while. And that $25,000 um, figure would cover that whole replacement? I'm sorry, say that again? The $25,000 you guys are requesting would cover the entire replacement? Yes. Okay. Next up are our Millwoods tennis courts. And this is for repairs on the court itself. We're with the Amosite over the years, the cracks open up and we had the tennis company out this fall to look at them, see how they were holding up. And they identified that we are starting to get cracks on them. And the sooner you repair them, the better off you are because they don't all open up and keep getting worse. So this is again, we do this with our tennis courts almost every year, every other year we're getting funds and we select a court that's next up that needs to be taken care of. So this is the renovation of the tennis courts. And there are four courts at Mill Woods that are lighted. Okay. Item number four is Keisha Farm. Um, our board is asked to carry a number of, in this case, the 25,000 because as, as the Keisha committee is looking at what's going to happen with the farm, the board members have felt that there should be money set aside in case we need to hire someone to come in and look at a site plan or a master plan, depending on what comes out of the recommendations of the Keisha Farm Committee. So that's something the park board is looking at and wants to be prepared as we move forward with that property. Our 
Our item number six is playground equipment replacement. And this is a new item that we decided has to now come up on our, um, on our capital improvement plan because a lot of our playscapes and playgrounds, both at the parks and at the schools, they're beginning to age. And as they age, some of the parts wear out. And unfortunately, these aren't $500 or $1,000 parts. These could be, um, we just got a quote for Hamner uh, School Playscape for repairing some of their items at $11,000. Neither us or physical ser services carries that kind of funds in our operating budget. So we felt it was appropriate at this time to begin to identify certain areas where we're gonna need to put some money in as some parts fail. So that's, the, um, that's what this item is for at this time. Okay. Could I just ask, do the parents groups help uh, with playground equipment? They've helped in the past with fundraising to build the playgrounds or the playscapes. And for some of the smaller items, if we went back to them, when, when it used to be 500 or 1,000, they would help us with that. And now the costs have just gotten much greater and the parts, the, they're the bigger parts that now need to be replaced. So it's very difficult for them to come up with those kind of funds at the PTO levels. Okay, thanks Kath. Our number seven item is the Solomon Wells House, the exterior repairs. That, um, that item is, we're still working off of the consultant's report from a few years ago. <laughs> And um, we've been working through it where we did the roofs, all the roofs were done. We've done, we're doing um, as needed exterior repairs, but they identified a whole series of repairs because it's all exterior wood, it's rotting out, the clapboards are rotting, rotting the railings are rotting, and we've actually replaced um, one set of railings this year just because if you, we were afraid if you leaned against it, the railing was gonna go and somebody was gonna fall. So physical services staff were able to replace one section of it, but we keep an eye on everything else, but that the, the, the exterior part of the house does need repair work. Is it becoming a safety issue? Well, when it becomes a safety issue, we do whatever we can to fix it. So, but, but, and it's what we can see. And we figure if one railing has gone, there are probably others that are at the same age group. So we keep an eye on it and do what we can. Sure, if you were to ask me, yeah, it is a safety issue. Okay. Item number eight is our Little League Classic Field renovation. This has been on the list for a few years now. And part of the problem with the cost is because of the drainage. If you could picture that fields located on what we call our upper fields above the pool on the uh, upper plateau where there's the fenced in field, which is the classic field. And then we have softball fields three, four and five up there. And unfortunately, everything from that, from the top of the town down comes right into the park and lands right along where the classic field is and drains right into the field and into softball fields three and four. So phase one is to handle the water that comes into the classic field and then renovate the field so that it hasn't gotten renovated in many years now so that we're able to get, take care of the problem which is a drainage and then fix the field. Okay. Kathy, are, are, uh, <clears throat> are any of these projects part of your operating budget or are this over and above? The, all these costs are not in our operating budget because they're fairly substantial costs and have not been in our operating budget. Okay. I wish they let me put some of them in the operating budget. That would be pretty good. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, if you have continual maintenance on, on things, that should be part of the, in my opinion, your, your uh, you know, your continuing budget. I mean, uh, 
Uh, it's like it's like you talked about uh, uh, air conditioning. You know, uh, in our house, we have to have the air conditioning serviced on a on a regular basis. So that's part of our operating costs in my house. So anyway, just just a couple thoughts. Yeah, and the air conditioning. We do have funds in our budget to service the air conditioning unit to you know a lot of those kinds of things, but not the big money to replace or repair to the extent that some of these projects are. Like we're putting repair money into the air conditioning unit. Every year that number goes up just because of the age of the unit. Thank you. Um, next up item nine is our community center parking lot repairs. That's also under um, pavement maintenance in the capital budget, capital improvement plan also. And I've talked about that in the past where um, engineering has gone out and identified areas that maintenance comes in. It's kind of like fixing potholes. They do that all the time, but we've got areas that just continue to open up. And this would be a stopgap measure to fix those areas. It's not redoing all the parking lots. It's just picking the worst areas that are taking a lot of maintenance issues and continually open up. And sometimes you never know when they're gonna open up. So that's part of the problem. So we're just trying to do some of the work out there to refill some of the areas that have deteriorated a bit. So Kathy, with the 20,000 that's already been allocated, have you been able to make repairs or do you need more money to really uh, have an impact? We haven't used that 20,000 yet. We were looking to get all of it and get it get it all done at once. But maintenance is still using their funds to fix the potholes. So they're doing it that way. Gotcha. Thanks. Um, number 10 is the high school softball field at Catone. And that's come up because we've had a group of parents that have reached out to us to talk about exactly what the public letter, the letter that the email that came in was talking about some of the improvements that they would like to see at the Catone softball field for the high school team. And um, Sally and I and the athletic director have met with the parents and gotten some of their information of what they were looking for. And uh, we're in the process now of identifying um, we identified what it is they were looking for and uh, engineering was able to do a site plan for us of the different areas that they're looking for. And we're getting cost estimates for those kinds of things right now. And I, uh, Bark Board just wanted to put it in their uh, capital improvement plan to identify the issue to create, again, it, you may, many of you may know that with Parks and Rec, we work with parent groups, organization on partnerships for some of our park projects. And with those partnerships, we try to work with them where they helped fundraise. We get at some town money as matching and working together, we're able to get the project done and without using a lot of town funds, but putting some town funds in and also having them the group fundraise for it. And this parent group is ready, willing, they're ready to go to fundraise for it. So we, uh, the park board chose to put a $25,000 match in for the town while we're going through all this process with the parents at this time. And, um, and what the parents are looking for with this is they're looking to be um, equal or, or equitable with what's at the high school baseball varsity field with the dugouts, the scoreboard. And we wanna bring electricity to that for the scoreboard and also so that they could have a mini uh, press box, if you will, uh, behind the backstop. It's not really a press box, it'd be a table and a chair but they're calling it a mini press box. And we, wanna, we have to bring power to it, which will come from the, um, the current press box at Catone Field. It'll kind of make a big loop around the field, hit the scoreboard and then come to the uh, backstop, behind the backstop. 
So those are the kinds of things we're looking at to do the electricity, the scoreboard, and um, the dugouts. And that's kind of what we're, that's what we're looking at. We're trying to see what we can get done and what they can fundraise. And that's why we're looking for some match from the town funds. Okay. Um, so if we did the 25 and they matched it, would that be enough to do the project? Or is that just a starting point? I, I'm, I, I'm not sure yet because I'm getting some estimates now that are coming in. And we've got to wait on the dugout estimate because we're, we're looking at a couple of different things. I'd like to say I think that would do it, but we're going to be going a little bit into on the third base side, we're going to be going a little bit into the embankment there that will have to be stabilized with some, uh-oh, I forgot. Uh, Derek, help me out. We were discussing maybe a two foot, small two foot block wall to retain the slope and, and right in front of the dugout, or right behind the dugout rather, because um, the grade does go up to the road there. So there, we'd have to notch into it a little bit just to maintain the existing uh, stone dust walk that goes around the field. Okay. So that part of it, we're just waiting on getting some cost estimates for that. I'm hoping that yes, we would be within the 50,000. And I'd like to think we would be based on some of the other costs I've seen but I just want to wait on that number, not knowing what that might take. Okay. But that would be a great start to get it to get to get it done, I think. And okay. I would bet they would be able to even raise more if we needed to. We'd certainly work with them on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, number I, I just. Is, um, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, number 11 is the uh, Millwoods parking lot, a stone dust parking lot adjacent to our tennis courts at Millwoods. And that's just something that we, we keep on the books because we know we don't have enough parking in the park when everything's going on. And then everybody parks crazy. But so we're always trying to identify areas where we can have more parking. And that, that is one area that we've looked at. And then for those of you that have been on the commission for a while, you know, I always bring up number 12, the Solomon Wells House parking lot, which is a currently a stone dust parking lot that sits behind the Solomon Wells house and kind of everything drains into it and it has no drainage. So um, it always has puddles, maintenance is always taken care of it. And in the winter, those puddles freeze. So everybody parks up on the road and it's just something that I like to, we, the board likes to keep on the list. I like to keep on the list because we're always looking to if there's grant money available. They always ask us, is it on your capital list? So we're always trying to look at that because if it's a dry day, the parking lot's fine. But when it rains, whether it's winter or summer or the spring, it does have issues. So that's why I, um, we keep that on there just to, um, Something may happen someday and I'll find the money for it or the board will come up with an idea. So that kind of was in a nutshell, the park and rec project. I did it relatively quickly. I didn't get into all the dollar amounts and they're right there and we have gotten the estimates for them. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions. I just have one, Kathy. Uh, was there any discussions about doing anything about improving the lighting at the community center parking lot? No, no, we haven't, that hasn't come up. If, if you're out there at night, I've been there at a few events and it's, it's treacherous. You have people coming in. I'm speaking mostly about election night. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, with the traffic and people walking across the parking lot, you can hardly see where you're going. And is it both sides? Did, did they make? Well, I'm talking about the main entrance. Main entrance. We can look at that. We can certainly have some people come out and look at it. That that has been the lighting has been changed over the years with all the LED lighting and stuff. And we did have lighting engineers that kind of looked at all that. But if it's still looking dark, we could. Um, are the, we're so close to the, all the neighborhood that 
if we were to put big parking lot lights out there, we have gotten complaints and would get complaints. So we have to we have to see if we could balance that. But we can talk about how best to look at it. Okay. Derek, do we still Derek, do we still have the lighting survey from when we did the street lights for the parking lot? I remember you worked extensively with the lighting consultant. Yeah, they had looked at some options out there. Um, off the top of my head, from what I remember, you know, there was there were options that included putting in some new posts. I think we opted at the time just to go ahead with the, the LED fixture replacements as they were. Um, but I have to go back and take a look. I know we did look at some options out there. All that right, so that's something we can look at. Yeah. The deputy mayor is correct about the lighting there. Uh, but I think if the pavement was fixed, then it would be a little easier for people to, to walk there because you're both looking at below your feet to make certain you're not falling into potholes and you don't have very good lighting. So, uh, so folks are not very confident walking in that lot at night. So um, I, I agree with him 100%. Um, and this committee has, has talked about, um, you know, perhaps making a recommendation uh, for, you know, for a bond um, a project on that building. Um, it, it's really out of our purview, but um, we certainly have heard about all the needs there uh, from both, you know, a safety standpoint, but also economic because um, the center is, is utilized um, uh, for um, events and such. But um, it, it, let me just kind of segue into my observation with many of these projects that they are um, highlighted red that they could be for a future bond referendum. So I would be interested in hearing from the deputy mayor uh, and the town manager about you know what the thoughts are of of leadership uh, uh, in terms of of uh, any future bonding uh, for for some of these uh, initiatives. Um, with, with the park and rec, you know, there's there's quite a bit there. So um, what can you share? Um, I can share that at the moment, we have a very large bonding proposal or potential with uh, school renovations. So if we're talking about, you know, a $90 million project, I think it's going to be hard pressed to try and gather uh, you know, a bunch of these relatively smaller projects together, even though they're needed. I think that's going to be a very large ask to the community to uh, do several bonds at once. I don't know, Bonnie, if you have any other anything. No, to add? I, I, in fact, um, I think any bond project isn't going anywhere. There's just People are very nervous about the economy. So, but I mean, since I've been here, no, no one's ever talked about a bond project other than the schools. So with the list that we're looking at, then who makes the decision to um, identify an item as a potential bond? referendum item because there there's quite a bit of red here that's why i'm asking i think i think i had to, i talked to derek before the meeting a little bit and i was confused by it myself christine it's only the highlighted um actual text in red that are the bond referendum it's not the numbers over on the right that are in red under the projects Yeah, I, sh I should have used a different color. <clears throat> the, under column K is our project descriptions and some of those numbers there are, it either says it's a new project or it refers to the uh, CIP account number that exists. Um, the, only, the only projects that were noted for that are four of them under the schools category. So it's just the red text under the project name. Those are the four that are, are up for consideration. So all of the various uh, park and rec projects are not for uh, bond consideration. 
That's correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of red there. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No, thanks for clarifying that. I, that's why I asked the, the deputy mayor because uh, I, I thought maybe we, we had a, a bond plan uh, before. So speaking of bond, um, if I could just um, very quickly ask um, Sally, because I saw you on camera there, Sally, with um, regards to the high school uh, field um, item, um, as, as you know, the high school renovation, we were limited what we could do with the fields. Um, that project is not closed out yet. So I just want to make certain that anything that's being proposed would not interfere, would not undo anything that was done on the referendum, uh, you know, as we're waiting for uh, final approval and funding from, from the state. Can, can you just uh, address that? To my knowledge, anything that's been discussed here in regard to the softball field is only adding to what was already done. It's not taking anything away from that area. Okay, so I saw some bushes being taken out, some modification to the footprint. Again, just want to make certain that that's nothing that we, we paid for as part of you know exterior upgrades. Yeah, no, there was in that area we didn't plant any bushes um, when we did when we did that, and we didn't touch any of the grading um, that they're talking about in that um, extended area. So it, we're not touching the footprint of what we used to call Mini Catone. Okay, okay, just uh, thank you for confirming that uh, for me. Hey, anybody else have any other questions for Kathy? Okay, I guess we can move on to the next item. Um, thank, you, thank you all very much. Thank you, Kathy. Do you need me to stay? Or are we good? I think we're good. I think we're good, Kath. Okay, great. Have a good evening. You too. You. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item, um, drainage, pavement, maintenance, and sidewalks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'm gonna start with drainage projects. Um, priority one was town dam repairs. <clears throat> this is a $75,000 request for part of the project. Um, it's a mandate from DEP Dam Safety Division. In 2016, the town had a consultant inspect all of our dams and they were recommended minor repairs or what we consider minor repairs on four of our dams. Um, they're required to ensure the dam embankments are stable. Um, most of them are earthen embankments with a lot of vegetation. So there's tree stumps, trees and tree stumps that need to be taken out. There's erosion control knees. There's uh, pipes with joint repairs that are required. So we've moved forward with two of them. Uh, we've completed semi-final design, or our consultant has completed sem semi-final design plans for two in Millwoods Park. Um, one is the Millwoods Pond Park Dam, and the other one's the Millwoods Swimming Pond Dam. What we're looking for now is uh, we're, they're going into DEP soon for, for permitting. Um, so I'm looking for construction funding to at least get those two done um, of the four that are required as part of this project. I'm just gonna keep moving along. If anyone has a question, just please jump in. Okay. Uh, number two is Gough Brook Dams Hazard Class Assessments. Um, the town just received a letter from DEP uh, last month uh, towards the end of December, um, doing two things. One, checking on the status of the four dams I was just referring to. And as I said, we've, we're, we're underway with a couple of them, at least through design. But they also want us to do um, an evaluation of the hazard classifications of the dam through the Gough Brook watershed, which is in the southeast corner of town. That those um, classifications were questioned during the 2016 in inspections. So what the classification deals with is, is the safety of the dam and the impacts it would have if it were to fail. Um, we have ratings. I think DEP now, it's, they were done so long ago. Um, wants us to just reevaluate and ensure that their, their ratings are correct. 
the what the difference that makes is if higher ratings, more hazardous dams require more frequent inspections. So, you know, I don't know what will come out of that, but they have um, directed us to to do that assessment. So, um, with you know work on Bell Pond that's coming up very soon, I want to get I wanted to get this done because it's done as a um, as a sequence. So there's there's uh, six dams starting at Bell Pond down in Millwoods Park all the way up to the 1860 Reservoir. And what they do as part of this analysis is a dam break analysis, where if the dam were to fail, what's the ripple effect to all the dams downstream, what would happen? Um, so with that, it would tie in nicely to the Bell Pond project we have coming up that we already have funding for. So I, I kind of want to do that at the same time. So that way, if there are any additional improvements needed at Bell Pond, it could be done at that time while we're in construction. So this is a $25,000 request um, based on one of our consultants' um, quotes to do the work. Number three is a miscellaneous drainage request. Um, you see, those of you that have been on the committee have seen that in the past. Um, I've requested funds to have money available for smaller drainage projects that don't necessarily rise to the level of a CIP project. Um, I provided a list that was started back in 1997 with a number of stormwater projects on it. Relatively small, some of them are a couple catch basins and some pipe. I mean, right now I just don't have any funding to do some of these. Um, we have been able to accomplish some of them, um, mostly due to uh, either either through CIP funding or they were done in, uh, in conjunction with our, our paving programs. Because um, usually if we have some drainage improvements in that area and they're relatively small, we, you know, of course we wanna get that done before we pave. They usually, most of them deal with safety and flooding, ponding issues um, that have been occurring for a while. Some areas are repetitive issues, some areas are we don't hear as much about. So. This request is just have some money available. Um, staff would determine based on need and, and importance where money would be spent. Um, I do wanna note that we currently have $200,000 in, in drainage or just miscellaneous drainage set aside right now in the ARPA funding list. So this could potentially you know, be covered with that. Um, but I had put, this in, put in this request prior to that. So I'm just making you aware of it. And that can be part of the discussion when we look at all the CIP and ARPA projects um, as part of this process. Okay, number four is replacement of the Copper Mill Road culvert uh, over Golf Brook. It's a $25,000 request to begin design. Um, this is a safety consideration. Um, state considers all culverts, um, spans or widths that are uh, six to 20 feet, they call them bridges. Um, so we had a, a consultant come out and inspect seven bridges in 2020. Um, I provided the list, uh, just a rating list for all of them. <clears throat> you may notice on that, number one is our Spring Street uh, culvert on that. That is going to be taken care of as part of the dam improvements. We have a million dollars in state grant and aid funds to repair the dam at that location and also do some park improvements. So this culvert will be addressed as part of that project. Uh, number two on the list is, is this project um, at Copper Mill Road. They're estimating, you know, has a 10 or less year service life left. Um, this project was originally identified back in 1995 when we did a, a townwide watershed management plan. Um, it was addressed to alleviate of fl flooding issues um, at the time. Now it's getting to be more of a structural issue as well. So the intent with this is to seek state local bridge program funds to replace the culvert with a properly sized one. In order to apply, we need to have a preliminary engineering study done. Um, we don't have to have complete final designs, but we, we, they do require preliminary engineering. So this request is to retain a consultant to get to that point. Um, the way that program works, it's a 50-50 split between the town and um, the state. So this request is just make, get us to a point where we can apply for funding through the state. Uh, number five is a related project. That's, this is replacement of that culvert. These are construction funds. Um, right now, it's estimated to cost about $600,000 in total. Our match would be $300,000, um, which is quite a bit. So my request now is really to just start the funding process for that. Um, as I mentioned, it's a 50-50 split. So I want to begin funding that. So when we do get the preliminary engineering done, um, we're closer to the amount of money we're going to need. Um, once, if we do apply and we are awarded funding from the state, you know, we're going to have a, a limited amount of time um, to get the rest of the funds in place. So rather than coming back for one big chunk at a later date, I'm trying to get some money put aside now so we can plan ahead, understanding it's going to take a few years to, to allocate the funds we're going to need. 
That was it for drainage requests. <clears throat> I'm gonna move on to the pavement maintenance. So priority one is straddle hill area road settlement. This is a whole neighborhood where drainage and sanitary sewer trenches uh, that were installed back in the 1980s are settling throughout this whole neighborhood. It's a number of streets, Straddle Hill, uh, Silo Drive, Willow Street, and some of the adjoining roads. It's causing potholes in the road and safety issues. What, I'm, what we have uh, so far is we've gotten some funding uh, to retain a consultant. We have to have some field investigations done. We have TV inspected, video inspected all of our drainage pipes and cannot identify what would be causing uh, the, these sinkholes to form. If you look at some of the pictures, sinkholes are forming every eight, eight to 10 feet pretty consistently throughout a lot of the area. We have sanitary sewer trenches where the whole trenches are settling. MDC has done the same thing and inspected all their pipes and, and not been able to know what the issue is. So this point, we're thinking it's a combination of a recent high groundwater situation out there, as well as <clears throat> potentially poor um, materials and compaction when they originally installed the utilities is the best guess at this point. What I'm looking to do is um, retain a consultant to, to do a little bit more field investigation and some testing out there to give us a recommendation on what we might need. You know, depending on what this project will entail, it could be as um, estimating up to as much as $500,000 project. I'm hoping it'll be less. It'll really depend on what their recommendations are to address it. Um, right now, this request for $50,000 is to start funding some of the construction. The $50,000 that's been allocated will allow me to get the consultant on board and do maybe the, the lower end of Straddle Hill, which is the worst area and where I get the most calls. Um, but as I mentioned, this, there's a whole neighborhood up here that has issues. Um, it will be coming up for, on our paving program, I anticipate in the next few years. So trying to get ahead of that and address the subsurface issues before we get to the paving program. Um, obviously we wanna do that first. So <clears throat> this request is to just further fund that project so we can get more accomplished uh, in the near term. Uh, just a couple questions, Derek. Yep. So am I, am I reading this right? There's, you have 50,000 allocated right now, but you haven't yet hired any uh, consultant work. Is that correct? That's correct. And then the seventy-five thousand you're asking for would be to do more consulting work and some repairs, or I missed that part. No, it would be. I, I think the consultant will be covered in the money I have. This is because I'm estimating this could be a half a million dollar project. I'm, I'm trying to get more funding for construction that's going to be required. I know, you know, what I have now is not going to cover much of the road. It's there's it's pretty extensive up there. Um, so this is just to get more more money so we can put a larger construction package together at a better at a better rate, economies of scale. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I misspoke. It's a seventy five thousand dollar request. Um, traffic sign inventory. <clears throat> this is a mandated project. Um, in in twenty fourteen, um, Federal Highway Administration required municipalities to implement an asset management system for the traffic signs. Um, the purpose of that is to ensure they have proper ret retroreflectivity for nighttime driving. Um, right now, we don't have a formal system. Uh, we do have a, a, a person down in physical services that manages the signs, and he does replace them from time to time, but there's really no management system in place. So this request is to get a consultant on board to be able to come out and get a snapshot at one, at one time of all of our signs, traffic signs. We estimate there's about 3,500 in town, um, and being that they're constantly being you know, replaced or, or moved or removed. Um, we wanna do this at one time, otherwise it's just gonna be a nightmare if we do this over a long period of time. So we've gotten some um, quotes from different consultants and $50,000 should cover them coming in. Um, they're gonna go out with uh, GPS equipment and locate each sign, give us all the dimensions and the retro reflectivity data that we need. And then from there, we can develop a capital plan for replacing signs as needed um, based on addressing those that are worse first. Uh, but right now we just don't have that data. So I've requested this a couple of times the last, you know, maybe a couple of years. And uh, you know, I'm coming back at this point to see if I can get the funding to do it now. I just got one thing to add to that uh, for the group. I know uh, Mayor Rell made a comment to you, Derek, about the number of signs and would the consultant identify like duplication of signs or just strictly identify where they are 
And then it would be up to, you know, your staff to say, you know, we don't need, you know, three, uh, you know, right turn ahead or something, whatever it may be, you know, it's a, 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 with the intent of trying to eliminate some signs if, if possible. That could be inclu included in the scope of work. It'll depend on the type of consultant we get on board. Um, some engineering firms do that and they could look at that for us. Some of the consultants are more strictly uh, GIS, GPS based and not necessarily engineers, so they're collecting data. Yeah. Um, but either, either way, it, we would have the data at the end to be able to say, um, you know, turn, you know, look at on a map all our no parking signs and identify, hey, you know, we've got three in this little stretch, maybe we don't need them. So it's something we'd be able to do with the data if we, even if we didn't include it in the, in the project. Yeah. Something to consider. We've had a number of residents comment about it, and, you know, trying to improve the, you know, aesthetics of the town without having, you know, too many signs. Let's put it that way. Yep. Thanks. And with respect to that comment regarding Wilco Hill Road the other day, we did have our oh. take a look at that and they've, they've stripped down some of the signage that they were going to put in so that we could minimize as much as possible. Okay, and then um, the last category for me is sidewalks. Um, every year I come to the group requesting <clears throat> funding for sidewalk ramps. It's a $50,000 request. <clears throat> this is also a mandate and a safety issue. Federal Highway Administration and U.S. Department of Justice um, requires all sidewalk ramps that are joining any new pavement to be upgraded to ADA standards. In most instances, that means um, identifying they got to have the proper slope. They have to have the warning tiles that you might mm -hmm. see red warning tiles there with the bumps on them. Those are required by ADA. And so anytime we're doing any road work, whether it's a mill and overlay, it's a road reconstruction, Anytime there's new pavement that's gonna to touch a ramp, we're required to replace them. So we've been doing ramps ahead of, and in conjunction with our paving program. So as we have roads that are gonna be paved, we get out there ahead of time, replace the ramps that need to be replaced. Um, that way we're meeting the, the requirement. Um, we also have a little bit of funding in there for, we always, we always have ramps that come up in other locations. Um, sometimes we are, we're looking at areas around schools and we'll do a group of them in that area. Um, so. It's multiple locations, but I come back every year because this is not covered in my operating budget. So CIP funds are, are utilized. Um, in most years, we have enough. Um, there have been some years where we've had to hold off on work until we could get funded again. So we try to, to, to maximize the funding as, as much as we can um, to get as much done as we can. Eric, did uh, Kathy uh, have a uh, ADA uh, uh, you know, project? Would that fall under this? I mean, is this something you guys could repair? It's our contractor may be capable of doing it. We, we've kept it separate just because that is associated with the building entrance um, and some ramp work that needs to be done going into the building. This work is for engineering. We usually handle everything in the right of way. So this is strictly for um, those ramps along roads. So we've kept it separate because that was kind of a large project in and of itself. And it's, that's part of it. Um, but we have, it is, it is, track separately than what we're doing in the right of way. Okay, thank you. We've been working on this for quite a while, Dan. I mean, are we getting close to getting all the ones that need to be replaced, replaced? I know new ones are always gonna come up. Yeah, we have been funding it for a long time. We have a lot of ramp, or sidewalk ramps. <clears throat> One of the issues I have is I, I don't have a good handle on how many. Um, we have uh, collected data as part of the, um, there's the, the bike ped work group that's been working for the last few years to develop a bike ped plan in town. And as part of that study, they've collected some information. So that's something that that's not complete yet, but once we're done with that, we'll have a better understanding. I, I do, that is one of the projects we need to figure out how to do is to kind of map out where they are, which ones are replaced. Um, so I don't have a good sense of where we are, but I, I can tell you every time we're going to a new paving program, generally, you know, 80, 90% of the ramps need replacement because they haven't been done. So. There's, there's quite a few. Every time we're doing this, there's always ramps that need to be done. I know we've been doing it for so It's not going thing. Basically, the way we're doing it right now has been working. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anybody else have any other questions I can answer? Just one, Derek. So on your uh, sheet, you always have the column G appropriated to date, but you don't really tell us what the balance is. Like you have 340,000 for ramps, how much is sitting there right now? Do you know? 
offhand or okay. I don't I don't know offhand. Um, we open up POs for each contract, which has been two-year yeah. contracts, and usually there's multiple POs throughout the season. Um, so I could check on that and get back to you on it. But you're 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 asking for 50 because that's typically what you do in a given year. Is that correct? That's been pretty standard. I mean, sometimes I've asked for you know 65, I think last year. Other years I've asked for 25. We take a look at the program that we have coming up and estimate how many ramps we're going to need. Um, lately, we've been also looking at the fact that we've had some studies done by UConn students that um, have identified other locations that need to be done. Um, maybe locations along Main Street where we might not be able to fund it another way. So I, there's a little bit of extra built in for some other locations, but generally we look at our paving program coming up over the next fiscal year and figure out what we think we're going to need for ramps. Great, thanks. Sure. Anybody have any other questions for Derek? Okay, um, I guess we can move on to the next item. Is there any old business? Um, there's no, no old business to know, although I did want to talk with the group about um, the process going forward for prioritizing. Okay. Um, so with the latest uh, worksheet that I had sent you, I have added our ARPA funding projects to the list that are also could be considered capital <coughs> projects at the bottom shown in the um, shown in the blue. So similar to some of the other projects, <coughs> the project name that are shown in blue that could be ARPA funded, the additional projects uh, down at the bottom of sheet three and going into sheet four are, are those that we carried over from the lists that were also included in the packet that I had sent you. So <clears throat> a couple questions is one, um, you know, we have different um, department heads that are responsible for these different projects. Uh, most of them fall under Sally and Kathy. Um, some are some other department heads. Would you like uh, would you like them to come in next week, at, you know, at the beginning of the meeting and kind of discuss some of these projects similar to what we've done with the CIP so you can be a little more familiar with them? If, if so, we can try and schedule that. Uh, I think it might be helpful. Um, because, I mean, if they're trying to get funding under the ARP or NC, the capital improvement, um, I think it'd be a good idea to try and fund some of the stuff on the capital improvement that the ARPA can't do because we've got an opportunity this right now we have um, money available from the federal government that can be spent on those projects and we can concentrate on the stuff that we don't have the money from the federal government for and maybe get some of these things off the list like the mayor wanted. So I mean if it's something that actually thinking they're going to be able to get the money for maybe it's something we can shy away from funding where we'd normally have to. Yeah, well, as we you know talked about, this year is going to be different than usual. Um, and that this kind of leads into my next question is, you know, historically, um, we've or you as a group has a, have identified the projects that you want to fund, and then you've been able to you know identify rank them. Usually, we have you know eighteen to twenty something like that. Um, this year, because we wanted to do the CIP and the ARPA funding and, and rank all those projects, we I think we have thirty nine projects. Um, so as you know, sometimes that can be difficult with five of you trying to figure out, you know, 40 projects, you know, what's one, what's four, what's eight. Sometimes they're difficult to assess. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could have some, um, some of the department heads come in and talk about these projects so you understand them better, like you do the CIP ones we just went through. A um, couple of ways we could do it is the way we've always done it. And you guys can just kind of uh, work it out amongst yourself in the meeting and, and come up with which you think would be your, your priority list for the 40 projects. Otherwise, another possibility is I could um, clean up this list and send you either an Excel file or, or a PDF of the list for you to look at and, and rank yourself. Um, if you wanted to do that and then return them to me, I could kind of tabulate all the responses and score each project and at least come up with a list based on everybody's um, suggestions on where they should fall for a for discussion at the next meeting. So at least we have something to work off of and then we can move, you can move projects up or down the list if you feel it's appropriate. 
So, I mean, I leave that up to the group on how you want to do that. Um, I'm open, you know, I'm open to whatever you'd like me to do. Um, but I was thinking maybe having you guys look at it individually and then, and then tabulating all that information and then furthering the discussion may make it easier um, going through the process. Well, I think it would be helpful to department heads that did the ranking. You know, you got 39 projects and they could provide a little rationale, okay, data for, 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 for their, you know, their priorities. I mean, we've talked about mandates. Obviously, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to meet, uh, you know, mandates. So I, I think I'd rather have the department heads rank and then we can look at their rankings and discuss it. Because like you said, 39 projects is a lot of projects and they know more about these projects than we do. So let's go to the people who know, who know more about them and their rationale. That's my two cents. Yeah, we could do that. Um, yeah, they I'll are, talk to Tom Manager about how, how best to work that into to the list. They are kind of already ranked by department head within their own department. I mean, you know, everybody's got their list of their project in the order to ranking them in. So, I mean, what we've done in the past is pick projects out of each department. And put them into the figure that the nine hundred thousand was allowed to work with. Uh, yep. So it's so we could look at them by category and have them um, fit those projects into where they would fit in their priority list for that category. Um, that would work as well. So then you'd see their priority for each category, and then you can make your determinations from that. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, normally at this point we'd run through the list, but with Mike not being here and we haven't heard from the fire department yet, um, I think we might be better off with you sending something out, like you said, and we can go through it during the week and get it back to you and then have some better understanding of where we stand next week. And um, if the other department heads, a couple of them can come, I think that would be helpful. Okay. I, I'll see now, who's available. Are we... Um, doing two separate lists? Are we doing our normal capital improvement list and then the ARP list or are they going to be combined? I think it would make some sense if you took the 900,000 from general fund, pretend there was an ARPA funds, prioritize 900,000 worth of projects and then start working on ARPA. That would be my suggestion. Unless one of those projects could also be ARPA. Yes. Oh, yes. Many of them would be, yeah. But we can put that into our prioritizing the 900,000 based on the fact that some of them could be ARPA. Right. Which we could prioritize the non-ARPA ones yep. in the 900,000. So um, I think if everybody starts working individually going through the list and working on putting together a $900,000 list. Um, what we've always done is work through and, you know, we haven't always been able to fund entire um, requests because we try and work with everybody and make sure um, all the departments have some money to work with. And we've always worked our way through and reduced things and kept cutting and kept cutting until we got to our number. Um, so we can do that. And then um, after next week, um, we'll have a better understanding of the art projects and what their um, priorities are. And we can either start to look at that next week or maybe get together again the following week and work on the art projects and hopefully at least have um, our capital improvement list put together for next week so we have some idea where we're going. Now, can someone explain to me the art? projects what's that acronym stand for let's see if i can remember american tom help me here <laughs> american recovery what's okay. the what's the p i think i got it here hold on one second i gotta the, the paper plan. american it's, recovery plan act it's uh it's covid money <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> okay okay and OMB, I got something today that OMB is coming out with the final rule. So, um, so we'll have to see what's in that. Just for, one for, thing we have. Christine, for what? 
for for the funding for ARPA. Uh, yeah, I don't believe that there's a final rule on. Yeah, it. there is. It came. Yeah, it came out. I'll send it to everybody. It came out when, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, if you could send uh, the final. Yeah. Um, so one thing we need to be mindful of is time. You know, it's it's great to to say we're going to use ARPA funds for for you know Project A, but with the you know supply chain issues and that you know, are you making a an obligation that um, is realistic? So I think we're going to need some additional information. We're not there yet, but you know, unlike the general funds that we can just carry, we can't do that with the federal funds. You're gonna right, you've got to commit it and um, then you've got to alloc spend you have to allocate by 2024, spend by 2026. Yeah. And that might seem a, a ways off for us, but I, I have COVID grants right now that um we didn't dream of them having to get extended, but these are IT projects where uh, we we can't get materials, and so I just had to get another oh, yeah. extension. So time time uh, moves quickly, so we just have yeah, to be absolutely. mindful of that. We're not the only one who's going to start looking for contractors, and you know every Thanks. every town who's got COVID money is going to start doing the same thing. Well, and the other thing is the prices are going up on everything. Yep. And, and I'm finding um, that these vendors aren't holding prices for, you know, 30, 60 days. We had a situation today. They gave us a, a quote that's good for seven days yeah. for an IT project. So and it's because they can, because there's someone else who, you know, will hire them. So, right. Uh, so we just have to be mindful of that. But yeah, if you could send the final rule, that would be great. Okay. I just have one comment I'd like to make to the group about the uh, prioritizing. Um, <clears throat> if you would consider, if we have 39 projects total, why not prioritize the entire 39 projects and then can worry about what's going to fund those projects as the second step. In other words, if you have, let's just say, for example, we have a $900,000 project that's on the ARPA list that is, you know, the Bell Dam is going to fail in the next three days or some, you know, some real got to get it done priority type item instead of treating that as the one and only capital item, just put it on the list, go down in, in order of priority, and then divvy up the list by what, what you can spend the 900000 in capital on. I like that idea. I mean, ultimately, it's up to the council anyways, through the budget process and the ARPA funding. So then this group wouldn't have to worry about that as much. <coughs> but it's, it would be better for a group to prioritize it rather than the council. Right, members I agree. Don't have all the, you know, they haven't been in these meetings uh, listening to all the pros right. and cons projects. So. You guys would just worry about the money, Tom. Well, I mean, it's unfortunate, but, you know, last go around in the time before that, council cut things that were in the uh, capital improvements project, to, you know, right? Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't have all the information, but we made a financial decision. So, it would, well, I, think I, it should, I think it should be a three-stage project. You start with the department heads, then you come to our committee, and then yep. it goes to the town council. Okay, yes. So yes. that way you have a thorough review. Okay, and 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 we can talk to that. Okay, I agree. Great. All right, so that makes sense to me too. Um, so what? So maybe what I could do is I'll I'll have I'll talk to the appropriate department head, see if they can prioritize their ARPA projects, you know, along with the CIP, 
And then you guys can see what everybody's priorities are like normal. And then you can just do what was just said where you guys rank, just rank them and how they're paid for will be decided, you know, at a later date, but at least give the every, give the next group the list of what you think are, should be the town's priorities going forward. Okay, so we're not trying to develop a list for 900,000 anymore. We're just going to rank all 39 projects. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I okay. think it would work great. <clears throat> That's fine with me. I mean, in the past, we've always tried to, you know, just come up with the 900,000. I think it'd be easier to rank these things and just um, figure out how to fund them after. And then maybe um, some of them can walk the list quicker with yep. the ARP money. But the Derek, past, I guess my question would be is in the interest of time and keeping things moving, are you able, knowing that we're going to get the rankings on the ARPA items? coming from those department heads, but are you able to give us a quick synopsis of, just so that we have some background prior to them ranking? Yeah, them. I think between Derek and I, um, yeah, we could. And, and then if we, if there's like Derek was saying, if there, if Sally and Kathy, which have the bit majority of the projects, we could just have them come on in and just in case if we miss something, but I think, God, by now, at least I've, I've gone through these lists so many times. I think between us, yes, we could handle it. Yeah, there is some descriptions, you know, in the last column of the worksheet, too. I like guess just a brief right. description. There's not as detailed as the narratives you've gotten for, for the CIP requests, but we'll, you know, we'll fill in the blanks if you have questions. And in the past, we've always tried to work where we handled safety mandates and matching money as a priority over everything else and then tried to fill in behind those uh, making sure we had those up to date and taken care of so we didn't miss out on matching funds or weren't being penalized for not handling a mandate on time so uh, that's a, the basis of how we started our process and then um, like i said we worked forward to come up with a nine hundred thousand dollar figure but a lot of these things like the community center hvac system for the banquet room I mean, in the past, we've tried to put money aside for things like that. We've managed to get it up to 127,000, but we funded the rest of the project. That's half the 900,000 we have. Um, it's different this year because I got the ARP money. So I think the best thing, like we said, is to put things in the order of priority and then let them figure out how they're gonna fund them. Okay, so I can, in addition to the priority, have a category assigned to those projects as well. Um, then you have, consistent information all the way through okay that'd be helpful thank you sure it'd be all helpful right. to know for some of these what is the, the the minimal amount of funds that are needed to do something so you know again the the requests are made but you know this is a negotiation that that takes place so um to know if you know, some money can be shaved off here, there for some of these. Um, and um, if an item should perhaps come off the list and wait a year because to tie up the funds um, when they could be used for something else, um, uh, you know, would, would um, make better sense than, um, uh, you know, putting funds aside that may not get used. And I, I'm, I'm thinking of items that are not um, mandate safety. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the library's requests here, for example. So, um, uh, so perhaps that's something uh, that the department heads, um, you know, could give some thought to. I'm thinking of really the 900 because uh, uh, you know we're, we council has to be able to to act on that as part of the budget, so that's why I'm a little more focused on that. I understand what you're saying about the art, but but we also want to be careful of not you know com combining projects because they are separate, which leads me to a question. Bonnie, do you need to get approval for projects to be uh, are funded or you just move forward and hope in an audit you can what do you, Oh, you mean from somebody on the outside? Yeah, does, um, yeah. 
does the funding, does the feds need to, to sign off on your projects or? Well, uh, basically the auditors are gonna be our eyes and ears. So once yeah. the council solidifies the list, I'm gonna have it passed by them. Um, uh, plus I've got somebody else um, who's an expert on this at CCM. So I'll have Michael take a look at it. Um, yeah, cause I don't wanna get us in trouble. And while I go back to retirement, you guys are all paying back the money. I don't want, nah, I don't think I wanna do that. So <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm gonna make sure that the experts review it. And Christine, when you see the final ruling, they've, they've relaxed the requirements substantially from the initial. Right. Oh, they have, okay. Oh yeah. Also, they've lightened it up because I believe Correct me if I'm wrong, Bonnie, but they got a, a huge, uh, you know, pushback by all the communities saying, right. you know, we got all this money and you're not letting us use it on any. Oh. Right. They uh, changed the rule around quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, so we're just doing a going to be doing a prioritizing the entire list, and we're not really coming up with a nine hundred thousand dollar list. If that's my understanding. I agree. I think that is what you decided, which okay. is great. I have one other question. Um, when I attended the meeting about the ARP initially before um, we even started this, the school's got an additional three and a half million dollars or something. Does any of that money fall under anything under here? Or is that completely separate from all of this? Like the new furniture they're looking for for the schools. Say that again, the three and a half million? The school's got an additional three and a half million oh. separate from this money. Is that oh, yes. things like the new furniture they're looking for? Uh, I'll ask Mr. Emmett. Um, I don't think so, but I'll double check. Just that, because it might change the, where it sits in the priorities. My okay. understanding that those funds were used for uh, helping uh, the situation of, uh, well, Lou, Lou's here, he could probably explain it better, but more toward uh, student welfare and curriculum things of that nature, not not assets, if you will. Is that I understand that, based on the COVID guidelines, I mean, furniture and spreading them out and everything is falls yeah. out of there. Like psychiatric help and extra consultants to try and recover you know two years of lost education those kind of things okay that, so that's the money's more it's not necessarily for anything on this list okay that's fine did i get it lou yeah more towards student success there you go that's the word i was looking for <laughs> okay then um derek if you can get that stuff put together for us and um if everybody can get it back to him prior to next week's meeting, maybe he can compile it all and come up with a starting point for prioritizing everything. And then we can go through and discuss it. And people have strong feelings about things. We can maybe move things around and go from there. Is it so? Just to, yeah. So just to confirm, do you want do you want to do that? Do you want to see it individually and come up with your own thoughts on rankings and and I'll tabulate? Yeah, I think that would be better to go through that many, I mean, items, item by item and keep going back and forth and back and forth. It's... Yeah, I think it would, I, I think it would be helpful to the group just to have a starting point to talk from. That's much generally consistent with what you're the guys are thinking. All right, so let me um, get that information. Um, I'll consolidate the list, make it simpler and send it to you. Electronically, you can do it that way or just mark it up by hand and send it back to me and I'll try to get something pulled together for the next meeting then. Okay. Um, Sounds like a great weekend snow project. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is, uh, anybody else, anything else they want to discuss before we move to adjournment? Okay, then can I get a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Be safe, everybody.